Let us today discuss the modern periodic table. So, when Mendeleev framed his periodic table, there was hardly anything that was known about the structure of an atom. But with the advent of the 20th century, many developments of theories in the field of atomic structure happened. In that regard, an English physicist named Henry Moseley, 1913, observed a dependence of the characteristics of X-ray spectra of elements. It was the atomic number, and not the atomic weight with which the frequency of X-rays emitted was related. Thus, the equation that was given was, root over of nu directly proportional to z, where nu is the frequency of the emitted X-rays, and z is the atomic number. Thus, atomic number and not the atomic weight was the most fundamental property. A group of scientists, like Niels Bohr, Alfred Werner etc., conducted studies and came up with a modern periodic table or long form of the periodic table. The modern periodic table has the maximum inspiration from Mendeleev's periodic table. So, what is the modern periodic law? The modern periodic law is, the physical and the chemical properties of elements are periodic functions of their atomic numbers. Let us now have a look at the periodic table. The main body of the long form of the periodic table consists of seven rows and 18 groups. The rows are called periods, and the columns are called groups. As you can see, the first period has two elements. The second and the third period have eight elements each. The fourth and fifth periods have 18 elements each. The sixth and seventh periods have 32 elements each. Now, can you see that there are two more rows below the main body of the periodic table? Well, below the main body of the periodic table lies the two more rows, which have lanthanides and actinides are part of the sixth and seventh periods, respectively. Let us now speak about the representation of the elements. The element in the boxes is placed along with its atomic number and average atomic mass, symbol, and name. For example, chlorine, which is present in period 3, and in group 17 has an atomic number of 17, an average atomic mass of 35.5, and the symbol of Cl. Likewise, titanium, which is in row number 4, and period number 4 has an atomic number of 22, a mass number of 47.867, and the symbol of Ti. Let us finally take a tour of the long form of the periodic table. Hydrogen, which has an atomic number of 1 is placed at the beginning of the periodic table. The atomic number increases as we move from left to right. Thus, helium, which is placed just after hydrogen, has an atomic number of 2. That is followed by lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine and neon. We observe that, the atomic number increases by one unit as we move from one element to the other. The third row has sodium, followed by magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. Likewise, we can see here the whole of the periodic table. We can observe a repetition in the physical and chemical properties of the elements, while going from lithium to sodium, and down the group and so on. We can see that same story of repetition of properties, while going from beryllium to radium. As we write the electronic configuration of elements, we realize that there is repetition in the outermost electronic configuration of atoms of various elements. Let us learn how to find the address of an element in the periodic table. Usually, the period number of an element corresponds to the highest principal quantum number and the block name is dependent on the subshell in which the last electron is entering. Now, how would you define the various blocks? Let's see. S block has elements in which the last electron enters the S subshell of its atom. 
P block has elements in which the last electron enters the P subshell of its atom. D block has elements in which the last electron enters the D subshell of its atom. F block has elements in which the last electron enters the F subshell of its atom. However, the group number is determined in different ways, depending on the block the element belongs to. Thus, for S block, it corresponds to the number of electrons present in the valence S subshell. For P block, it is the total number of electrons present in valence S and P subshell plus 10. For D block, it is equal to the total number of electrons present in N S and N minus 1 D subshell. For F block elements, they are all placed in group 3. Thus, based on this study, we can also conclude that the physical and the chemical properties of elements are periodic functions of their electronic configurations.